If you're practicing every day and are frustrated with your guitar speed staying the same year after year, then I bet you a million guitar picks you're making at least one of the speed crushing mistakes I'm gonna show you in this video. And I say this because, well, I made every single one of them. And once I realized this and stopped making them, my speed finally jumped a lot. <laughs> And the same thing pretty much always happens when I help one of my students fix these mistakes in their plan. To show you how these mistakes affect your speed, I got a handy little time turner here, and we're gonna travel back to year 2002 when I got fed up with being slow on guitar and try to build as much speed as I could as fast as I could. Let's do this. Oh, that's me right there. Just set a goal for myself to boost my speed from 100 BPM 16th notes to 160 in 30 days. And that right there was my first speed building mistake because I had no idea how long getting 60 beats per minute faster was supposed to take, much less if the way I was gonna practice would even make me faster at all. Anytime you're trying to reach a very specific outcome by a certain deadline using a process you're not really sure will work, well, that's about as likely to succeed as saying, I'm gonna walk into this random guitar center behind me and within one hour find somebody good I'm gonna start a band with. See, the better way to set goals would have been to just choose a practice method to follow and then make it my goal to simply follow it as thoroughly as I could for say two weeks. Then, after the time has passed, I'd look at what happened to my speed and change how I practiced if I wasn't getting faster. This is a much more intelligent way to set goals and it makes you much more likely to actually achieve the speed you want. Plus, it makes you enjoy the process a whole lot more too because now you are measuring success or failure based on the things you control, your actions, and not based on hitting some random outcome you have almost no control over. But back then, I still believed that simply writing down the thing I wanted was gonna make it come true, so here I am, bragging to two of my high school buddies about how I was gonna practice three hours per day and crush this challenge. And as you'd expect, they were being extremely supportive. Bro, no way. 100 bucks says you're not getting 60 beats per minute faster in 30 days. And if you fail, you gotta promise to only play one guitar for the rest of your life. That's a really weird bet, but okay. So with my ego, money, and future guitar collection riding on this, it was time to get to work on my first speed building strategy, which pretty much everyone who has ever tried to build speed has practiced. You know, the good old practice slow, use a metronome, and increase the tempo a few BPM at a time. Let's fast forward a few days and see how I'm getting on, shall we? Here I am on day 10 of my challenge, starting at about 40 BPM, speeding up by 4 BPM every couple of minutes till I can't go any faster, then I start over. You see, by this point, I was supposed to be about 20 BPM faster if I was ever to hit my 30 day speed goal. But despite practicing three hours per day, I was nowhere near close. And the reason for that was my next massive mistake. You see, I knew, just like you probably do, that there's no such thing as universal slow tempo. Plus, every guitar player seemed to demonstrate slow practice completely differently. Okay, I can do that. It is slow. What? Which made it flipping hard to know just how slowly I was supposed to practice. So I just guess and hope that the tempo I started at was slow enough and then guess again when it was okay to go faster. <sighs> if you practice like that, you got a better chance of convincing Angus Young to wear pants on stage than you do of building any speed. See, if you want your slow practice to actually make you faster, you don't start by asking, what tempo do I start at? Is 65 slow enough? No, you first need to get clear on how you want the lick to sound and how your hands should move for each note and then simply find the fastest speed on the metronome where you can play it that way. Now, sure, that tempo will likely be a lot slower than the tempo you ultimately want to play it at, but that is a completely different way of thinking than talking about slow practice like there's some metronome tempo called slow. This way of thinking lets you avoid boredom from just going through the motions like this guy over here, and it makes it crystal clear what tempo to start at and when you're ready to go faster. Really, all you have to do is monitor how much concentration it's taking you to play the lick with the quality you need to. And when you notice you need less focus than before to maintain the same quality of notes, boom, you can speed up. And speaking of knowing how your hands should move for each note, right here you're seeing my next big mistake. Can you guess what it is? Well, let me explain it like this. Imagine you're driving your car and you see this warning light, but you just shrug it off because, hey, the car's still running fine. 
But then the next morning, you get in to go to work and you hear this. This is what happens to guitars who use sloppy, inefficient motions that sound okay at slow speeds, but are impossible to maintain at faster tempos. Look at my fretting hand index finger here. In the time it takes for that finger to get back to the string after it comes up, I could have played two or three more notes. No wonder it was getting stuck at the 100 to 110 BPM range. The problem was right in front of my eyes every time I practiced but I was just not seeing how inefficient my motions were. So right now I'm feeling very down on myself and I'm becoming very disillusioned by this whole idea of slow practice because as you can see, my efforts are just not paying off. So here I am searching for new ways to build guitar speed. And I found this Sean Lane video that blew me away and gave me hope. Fracture the process when you get a little faster and a little faster and then just totally break with the continuum and jump up into some speed that you can't play at all. Just go for it. It might be completely sloppy, but then you try to clean it up over time. Whoa! And Sean is like the fastest guitar player ever. So how can this advice possibly lead me astray? Foreshadowing. So excited by this hot and promising new idea, that was exactly how I tried to practice for the next week. Let's go have a look at how that one is going. It's not gonna be much better, by the way. So here I am, jumping from 110 to 168, as per Sean's advice, and feeling all kinds of tension, making all kinds of mistakes, and hoping like heck I'd be able to clean it up over time. And it didn't take me long to realize that I have no idea what my mistakes at the higher speeds even are, or how exactly I'm supposed to be fixing them. This is what happens anytime you take great players' advice like gospel and fall prey to groupthink instead of thinking for yourself and asking a few very simple questions everyone must ask anytime you get any advice about building guitar hmm. Is this really how I should be practicing right now or is this completely inappropriate for me? See, he's starting to get it. Simply asking those questions would have helped me avoid wasting so much time on shiny objects that just happen to be trendy at the time and look for ways to build speed that'll actually move the needle. You see, Sean's advice is actually really good if you already have efficient technique and if you know how to keep your hands in sync, and if you're good at spotting excess tension and technique flaws when you make that speed jump. And of course, if you have a good sense of what tempos are even appropriate to jump to. And if you got all that, then yes, you can use the speed jumps, not to give yourself more speed, but rather to see how well your guitar playing mechanism is keeping up so you can preview your mistakes before you hit a speed plateau and decide if it makes sense to change your technique back at slower tempos before you make another jump. But if you don't even realize how sloppy your technique is during your slow practice, then making these unregulated speed jumps is pretty much a recipe for bad habits so you'll likely pay a whole lot of money to some guitar teacher to fix for you later. So with my time running out after wasting another week on practicing a method I was not ready for, my speed has only got up about 12 BPM since I started the challenge. And so this is me about five days later, trying to pick from my wrist and make my pick strokes as efficient as possible, because I read on some form that picking hand efficiency is the key to speed. Sounds simple enough. How can I possibly screw that up? Lots of ways. You see, there are a ton of variations on a simple wrist motion, some of which fall into the range of good, which pretty much explains why many great players use slightly different hand positions while playing. But then there are others where you're still technically doing the wrist motion, but you're doing it wrong. Like for example here, flat picking versus angling the pick 30 degrees, which creates more resistance from the string for each pick stroke, making you play slower. Or picking without muting the lower, aka thicker, strings, which makes you play sloppy and eats into your speed by making your motions bigger. Or picking with the fingers rigidly extended or tucked into a tight fist, or with the thumb pressed against the index finger, all of which cause excess tension. And sadly, despite my best attempts to streamline my picking, I simply wasn't clear enough on these nuances. Which is why here I am, after my 30 days are up, with my head hung in shame, listening to the well-deserved mocking of my friends for being such a failure. Hey, wait a minute. Stop the narration. That's not how the story ended. What do you mean I'm such a failure? Who cares if I didn't hit some stupid BBM number by some silly deadline? Beating myself up for no reason would have been my next big mistake. And this is such a killer of progress, not just with speed, but with everything you ever do on guitar. The whole time I was practicing, I was actually learning a lot about things that don't work. Mistakes I would never make again. So those are the things I should have been focusing on and feeling good about instead of getting upset over not getting 60 beats per minute faster. 
In fact, the biggest lesson I learned from this entire challenge was that building guitar speed is a whole lot like playing a game of Jeopardy. You see, you don't become a Jeopardy champion by answering questions about this thing called Jeopardy, right? Jeopardy is just what the game is called. Getting fast at guitar is also just the name of the game. You have to master the many different elements inside the world of guitar technique and practicing. And speed is just the prize you get when you win. So instead of asking, how do I build guitar speed, you should instead ask, what are all the elements that make speed happen, and how the heck do I master them if I only practice, say, one hour per day? Well, that is why you should watch this video next, where I show you exactly how to do just that. Oh, and if you want more help from me on how to build your speed, both free and paid, check out the links in the description of this video.